baby. It's episode number 78 of the Red River Horror Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Zakreski, joined as always by RedRiverHorror.com founder, Eddie Cayazzo. Hey, Ed, how's it going? Joe, Joe, I'm doing fantastic, huh? The sun is shining. It's spring. Halfway. It? April showers bring May flowers and all that crap. Hey, hit your halfway to Halloween <laughs> points. Oh, all yeah. All that good stuff. I say, you know, we're hey, six months away from our favorite time of year. We got to get through the heat first. <laughs> Uh, apologies to anybody who's curious as where have the episodes been? Mm-hmm. My kitchen has been destroyed by a burst pipe. Uh, we both had a lot of time on the road, and uh, yeah, yeah, everything's coming back together. We knew we knew it was going to get hectic, but in the meantime, Joe. Uh, so we, uh, I know a lot of you reached out about the Paramount Plus episode. Yeah. thank you for that. Uh, so that, of course, encouraged me. My wife's just like, you know, the founder of Red River Horror, why do you not have Shutter? So I just wanted everyone to know. In the meantime, I've picked up Shutter. So we'll be talking a lot about that in the future. But yeah, Joe, your uh, your floor got destroyed. Yeah, so I'm living in uh, my own personal horror <laughs> right, right, right now. Uh, did you tell Jody Angelo you got Shutter yet? I didn't. I All didn't right, actually. He's, yeah. he's the one always pushing us, Jody from Different Take. Yes. Every time, you got to get Shutter. You got to get Shutter. So uh, I mean, you I'm looking it. forward to running down some of those movies. I've been trying to catch up. I'm so mad I haven't watched X yet. That's me been too. Driving me nuts. Me too. Um. But I did get to watch The Batman. And one of the things that I've always loved about The Batman, like from what we grew up, we we started with the Tim Burton version. So we never really like what we were exposed. I mean, I know why I was to Adam West after. (laughs) Right, right. And, you know, it's silly. It's goofy. But it's like we grew up in the times where you had Michael Keaton's Batman, the Tim Burton Batman's, the Joel Schumacher Batman's that let's not talk about those right um but then batman the animated series yes all these things and like the thing i've always loved about batman is that it captures like the darker you know such like a darker superhero absolutely and i feel like one of the things is like there are horror elements in there there are characters in i'm growing big on this one eddie okay there are characters all across like in the comic world with all the superhero movies the marvel and the dcs how come none of them can get like a horror-ish movie done right i I would agree with you because i even said joe you know when we were talking about Red River Horror in the very, very beginning, all the way back in 2017. I said, you know, like, I know that this superhero content works really well for other places. Like, you see all these online channels, these loopers, these screen rants. Yeah. They always do a great job of finding articles, like, finding things to talk about and write about and that's something that I would never have thought of like for example they'll say you know here's how Quentin Tarantino would have done Halloween 6 right. it's like <laughs> whoa okay that's cool so so then I approached you I'm just like I think that there's got to be something in this Marvel Cinematic Universe and this DC whatever because you know I'm not yeah. a huge fan of those things I said, but there's got to be something that you Joe could extract from that to write about and then ultimately, now we have the podcast to talk about. Right. And you said, I, I'll try. I'll try. And and it's never just like, how about like the scariest moments in the MCU? It's just like, yeah, it's they don't have really them. like that. They don't really have them. I'm sure there's someone out there that would like to argue with me, but it's like whatever point they're going to bring up, it ain't it. And the closest that you're going to get in the Marvel world is going to be Blade. And that predates, you know. The like current Disney's MCU. purchase of the right, yeah. So it's like the closest you get is Blade, and he's and a vampire, right? He's half. Okay, so you get that, and I think I don't know, like it'd be debatable if Underworld counts or Hellboy, but it's like they're not really horror themed. They just have those darker tone, more like Batman esque. Okay, you know where it's like, but. Not like not so much the character, but in like the feeling of like you know you're creating this darkness around everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but you are right, Batman. For what it's worth, when we were kids, Batman the animated series was just a little bit darker than everything else. It was just a little bit darker than what was on television. Yeah. Um, the the Batman with the Tim Burton ones. I mean, the original 1989 with michael keaton that was that had some dark elements that was scary i mean that was pretty messed up yeah especially batman returns that's where i was like that 
actually there were moments in that film batman returns that did scare me so okay. you're right batman has always been a little darker a little grittier than everything else and that's what i've always appreciated about it but it like it's not there are like that's that's why i've always loved it but it's there's characters there's stories out there that are just not being done right and number one that i've talked about on this show i've talked about it on other shows i talk about it all the time Mm -hmm. is that the character of john constantine has never been used right yeah i really enjoyed the keanu reeves constantine we saw that in theaters together the IMAX. the first time i've ever been in that king of prussia imax and i i really loved the movie it was a lot of fun um and then they tried to do like a TV show, but no one's ever really gone in and gone like full Hellblazer because it's like you have to like, you, there's so much more material there to get a little grittier. Whereas it, the at least in the Keanu Reeves ones, it does open up with like an exorcism. And, and, right. You know, it has the, it, you know, it has that element there. It just doesn't lean into it as much as it could. Y- yes, I I enjoyed Constantine the film. It yeah. was fun, but it didn't in any way scare me. It didn't, when I shut the lights off at night, it didn't say, oh, that was an image that kind of stuck with me. No, just a great opening scene with an exorcism. Yeah. And then that's kind of where it stops from there. A little bit when he goes, when he like goes into hell, mm-hmm. you know, it's creepy, but it's like, eh, you know, we could have had a little more, probably some more pop outs or something. Just something, just something to elevate that horror feel. Like it doesn't have to be a horror movie. And why not just have something that, like, pops out at you a little more? Sure. And that's something that I think I've learned along the way, especially as you and I have, you know, been in the creator space before. Something I've learned along the way is that's why these directors Mm -hmm. are so important. So when you talk about, like, the the, uh, Christopher Nolan Batmans, right, it's just like, wow, this is on a scale that I would have never, ever thought a superhero could go right you know like like it was just a grander scale the acting was incredible the the spectacle of it was amazing so putting that aside it's just like yeah because he's a great director yeah like he has the vision he has what he wants and will get the budget to do so so bang here right. you go that's i don't think that the right person that the right director has yet been approached to create a a comic book film i'm trying to think what what was the 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 new mutants right the new mutants was supposed to be darker and scarier and i watched it and i don't know if it's just because i'm not as attached to comic books in that way but it it didn't really scare me it doesn't and And that's it's like the one where i think there's people who are like me like people who like these things but also really like horror movies i mean everyone's dying for like a, a revamp of spawn Okay, Spawn. Yes, so I throwing forgot another, about um, Yeah, dude, I'm yes. going to be throwing some stuff your way. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's just right. like, this just has, like, the Spawn from the 90s, you know, this the special effects weren't there to do it justice. And it did, you know, it, was, it went, leaned into the 90s where it kind of, like, gets, like, a little too goofy. Sure. Um, other than I mean, when I was a kid, I really liked it. But it's, like, one of those ones where it's, like, this needs something... This needs the treatment that everything else has been getting. Yes. And I don't think that's coming anytime soon. It's in the rumor mill nonstop. How about another spawn? Always. Because it's not, I mean, I'm telling you, it's something people want and they want something dark and they want something scary with it. I was going to say, I mean, I remember when the spawn thing was happening, people were, they were just hungry. You could have given them anything of him in movie form and they would, they would have been in. You know, right. like they were obsessed with the toys. I remember I worked at GameStop at the time when the yeah. uh, the toys were big. Yeah, and I'm not getting anything back. So about Spawn, I know, like, and like a DC has like all this good stuff, and they they get the worst treatment on screen. They really for, do. Save for the because uh, then the other one that keeps getting missed. You want to uh, take a guess at another one that keeps getting missed? I'm not as familiar with DC because you. So just a full disclosure to everybody listening, my, my horror mo- my, my horror movie love far exceeds my love for the the world of comic books. Uh, I loved Sam Raimi's Spider Man, so I am a Spider Man fan, uh, and I love the Batman's because when we were yeah. kids, there was Michael Keaton, and the uh, the Christopher Nolan ones were just so damn good. So I like Batman and I like Spider Man. So I was going to bring up Sam Raimi because he is directing uh, the he directed the latest Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that's coming out. He he directed the latest Doctor Strange. Yep. 
How did the he one get that's coming out? They come in theaters. It's coming out in theaters uh, this, in May. Well, then maybe I might actually see it. So it's led to a lot of speculation of like, oh, is there going to be a, a another Toby <laughs> Spider Man? Oh my gosh! Just because like they opened up the can of worms of you know the multiverses and people. If you know, it's one of those things, that people are going to pay to see it. They're going to they'll do it. Yeah, so that's what you know me. I was not a huge fan of all the outside interference in Spider-Man Homecoming. Right. Spider-Man, what's it? This was the third one. The one that I just saw last year with you. Not even last year. It was only a couple months ago. A couple months ago. (laughs) What was the the, the newest one? Uh, This was uh, No No Way Way Home. All right, so No Way Home uh, I liked a whole lot. It's great. But for uh, if you haven't seen it yet out there, the... Doctor Strange is the most so as much as I hated all the Tony Stark interference in Spider-Man Homecoming is in in Spider-Man No Way Home Doctor Strange was the most outside interference yeah of of all the what I just it just popped in my head we were at a press we were at the <laughs> Wizard World press thing that's right <laughs> yeah and there was a guy there and not a lot of, like, you know, people cosplay at the conventions. Usually there's not a lot of cosplay at the Q&A, the press uh, Q&A. But right, there's no cheering in the press box, Joe. Right. And then there was a guy there who was doing a Doctor Strange cosplay. You had no idea who Doctor Strange was no. at the time. This was before uh, Doctor Strange was introduced into the MCU and all that. So, mm-hmm. so you were looking at him and he's just like, man. <laughs> These people. <laughs> These they all, people. They all smell. <laughs> that was like, like, it's like, it's, it was, you know, nothing, no harm meant by it. It was right. just a, 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 an observation of just like, <laughs> I always, it just makes me laugh every time I see like Doctor Strange and then like you ended up standing next to it. He didn't smell. It was just like something just, you know, we're just being, we're I just, just had that in my head. We were just being assholes. We we're having a laugh. You know, we were, they were serving beer. Like we had the beer vouchers and we we're having a good time. Right. And, uh, but then you bumped and you're like, who are you? <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. I remember bumping it. Yeah, you're like, and then he's like, real nice guy. He's like, yeah. And I think Alex is the one who created. Oh, he's uh, you know, gave you a lowdown who Doctor Strange, Dr. Strange was. <laughs> but so that <laughs> so if you didn't know, like, they, well, yeah. So Doctor Strange with the outside interference and the Spider Man, the uh, uh, No Way Home or whatever. But I actually, you know what? I do remember that. So what I said to him was, I'm just like, oh. Thank God. And he's like, what? Oh, that's like, it. Yeah. Like, Thank God. You don't smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank God. Yeah. You don't smell. <laughs> A lot of people smell at these things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's ex- <laughs> <This is> amazing. <laughs> so... All that to say, okay, so 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 Sam Ra- <laughs> Sam Raimi did the the 2002 Spider Man. He's doing the new Doctor Strange, who doesn't smell. Yeah. Doctor <laughs> Doctor Strange was the most outside interference in this latest Spider Man film, No Way Home. So now there's speculation that that there could be a Sam Raimi, uh, uh, I guess Spider Man type. Yeah, thing? it's just like t- I think there's just so many people so stoked from yeah no way home that's just like oh anything could happen now it's like sure whatever that's fine sure um sam raimi's got you know it's just exciting to have him in there i mean he's so he i guess you could call him like the exception of like the one who goes from horror to true you know the guy who can do do it all um but we will give him his own dedicated episode or two we might and try and reach out to his press people. He would be someone I would love to talk to. If we get him or his brother Ted, yeah, be pretty good. The only thing, the only problem is, if we got Ted, then what I would worry about is me asking so much about Sam that Ted's like, "All right, dude, like, hey, but, we know? did pretty good with uh, Josh Whedon's brother. We or, did Matthew Whedon. Yeah, yeah. that guy was great. He, he's and could." I liked the film that he put out. Like the fact that he's in the horror space is, yeah, I think cool. Like you, you know, Joss more from the well. He did Buffy, right? Yeah, was that his did, big he thing? Did, he had those shows, and then he did. Uh, uh, was he Avengers? 
Oh yeah, that's so. that was a huge yeah. Duh. Yeah, so he you know okay. And now is he me too'd? I can't remember. I believe so. Okay, Joss Whedon's me too'd. So so he's out of the game for a little while until <laughs> he'll they'll, they'll they'll have some kind of big comeback for Joss Whedon. I don't mean that like I can't like I can't keep up with all the crap that's happening. <laughs> So so anyway, long yeah. story short, Batman, the Batman. Luckily, I have your HBO Max, <laughs> <laughs> so I could watch it again. Dude, dude, I fell asleep when I saw it in the theaters. Not for any reason other than I'm up at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's long. Yes. It's long. It captures that darkness, and I like how the jokes are like, oh, we just keep in like a darker, darker Batman. But it just makes me so hungry for something in that space to be more of a horror movie mixed with the hero element mm-hmm. and you know there there's stuff out there and the one there's i'm the thing that bothers me is like the ones that just miss like there's never hellblazers never really been done in a way that it could be and then the other one where i think they brought it back as a tv show and it was just yeah no it was brought back as a tv show in like 2019 and it's again just doesn't work is swamp thing okay and swamp thing's got a great like great opportunity there that just never really i didn't know there was a comic book thing called swamp i thought swamp thing was like a like a creature feature from the 50s that's That's a creature from the black lagoon oh right right so i always got them mixed up (laughs) um but swamp thing with he's dc and you know oh yeah you know we get into it DC. But one of those things where it's like, ah, you know, the opportunity's there, especially like with some of the DC movies where they try and like do like the creepy elements to everything. And so do you, you end th- up with Jared Leto covered in tattoos? Oh, there's another one that completely flopped with the horror element of him being a vampire with Mor- Morbius. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> which they would- kept delaying that, delaying that. Stop putting him in things. I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure he's like an actually probably a nice guy or something. I don't know. But whenever he does anything in like that, like he, I don't know, he's got to be, he is who he is and putting him in like these starring roles, superhero type roles or anything like it just does. It's, he's not that guy. That surprises me. I figure I would have taken you as someone who would have liked him. Not, not as the, the Joker thing. I know a, I pretty much yeah. Kyle's the only person I know that likes that Jared Leto Joker. Um, everybody yeah, else that. hates it. But I, that, that surprised me because I feel like he's someone – I'm trying to use a good analogy here. Like think of Zac Efron coming from High School Musical. Sure. And then the career he's had as an adult actor. It's actually pretty impressive. Yeah. Jared Leto back in the day was like the heartthrob type person. My so-called life. Right, right. Called and I, Claire Danes. <laughs> and he was, the, he was like the, the, the hunk in – Urban legend. That's right. So I always knew him from the the horror space, and he was in American Psycho. Yeah, and he was in a uh, Fight Club. He gets completely beat up in that. And he's the blonde. He has blonde <laughs> hair, and that just gets destroyed. <laughs> that's is it? That's him? Yeah, he's the blonde. Yeah, he's also in one of my favorite movies of all time, like the most depressing movie of all time, but still one of my favorites. Was oh, yeah. Requiem for a Dream. Requiem. Yeah, that, that. Like I said, the dude's very good at what he does, but for some reason, in the hero element things whether it's villain or hero or whatever it's, it's just not him yeah it doesn't it doesn't gel well with him now the opposite for uh mm-hmm. we'll go with another heartthrob jake gyllenhaal now he's done great in the uh yeah the, no no wait that well, you're talking about heroes i'm sorry i'm talking about horror yeah, he space did, he was great in uh no way and far from home spider-man far from home he was uh mysterio he was great in that right i haven't seen that i know <laughs> <laughs> but uh he you know there's just some where it's like maybe you just shouldn't be in this type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I get like Joker would be definitely very hard shoes to fill. That's why they went so extreme with it after like Heath Ledger. Sure. Um, and then if you tried to go classic, then you're going to get compared to Jack's Joker. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of good Jokers out there. Fine. Um, Mark Hamill, the voice of the Joker from the yeah. animated series, who revived it for the killing joke. Which was creepy, you know. I don't know if you knew that. Like, you know, there's the standalone move Batman animated movies that are darker. There, it's the same animation. It's basically the same as Batman the animated series. It's just darker. And it's all the same voice actors for I, the most part. I think Nick Cush from Movie Babble actually had one of 
those movies in a horror preview one month. I believe he did. Yes. And he also, I think we didn't agree on something. I can't remember what it was, but mm-hmm. we got to get Nick Cush back on. Too. We do. We so, do. Um, yeah. It, what's the, I'm trying to think of another one. What's the one uh, they did with Nick Cage? Uh, <sighs> it's Ghost Rider. Yeah, Ghost Rider. My, my skull's on fire, but I'm good. <laughs> so apparently that's going to be getting a revival <laughs> at, at some point. <laughs> Uh, but that one, not not so much. I don't know if you could throw in a horror thing in in there. So so I now have to go back and watch the Batman. I guess our jumping off point, or what we're t- kind of circling around like sharks here, is the Batman. Now the newest one out, Robert Pattinson as the main the main dude, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. Uh, you know that that other guy that was really creepy as the Riddler. Paul Dano. Paul Dano. <laughs> I'm surprised you can't remember his name because we used to just laugh about when we watched like Little Miss Sunshine. You'd be like, oh, Paul Dano. That's great. I don't remember you know, any right, of that. I mean, that's going back. So, I mean, so, I mean, he killed it. I mean, you would talk about a creepy character. His Riddler was creepy as hell. It was. And I think it was needed. Like, I never would have, just like with the Joker in Heath Ledger, I'm not comparing the two. What I'm saying is, how could that be scary? Heath Ledger made it scary. Paul Bookham Dano, him as the, like, when you think of the Riddler, we grew up with Jim Carrey as the Riddler. So it's like, oh, okay, it's going to be bonkers and off the walls. No, this is a pretty creepy freaking dude. No, and even (laughs) if, like, I would say the creepiest uh, villain in the space of all the Batman movies, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with uh, Shillian Shillian Murphy. Shillian Murphy. Oh, yeah. As Scarecrow. Yes. That was um, scary. And especially because that was like designed to kind of get in your head, mm-hmm. you know, and especially you know, seeing that. And that's where it was like made for IMAX, filmed on IMAX. And just like the way like the whole thing shook. Yes. Like the first time he like poisoned Batman. It was just, and it's like, oh, oh, yeah. Right. Scarecrow. Yeah. It's like, what? Um, so so your thoughts. I'm going to go back and rewatch The Batman, but you you know you this had a lot to live up to. You being a horror fan, a Batman fan, understanding the grittiness, understanding the the you know even some animated films have yeah. tackled this. So what so what are your what are your thoughts on oh, I love, The Batman? I love The Batman and I can't mm-hmm. wait for to see what they do next. The rumor mill is that it's going to be a prequel. Okay. Of sorts which is like, hey, cool. You go either way on this. Um you know, no, not to really spoil anything. I mean, it has an ending where it's like, oh, you could really go either way. Yeah. Um, I loved it, and it just made me hungry for that kind of movie that's dark with, you know, something with like a hero element to it. Like, may, like hopefully Blade will make a comeback or something like that, or, or Blade is making a comeback. It is. Well, so could could something so like Blade, Blade is coming back? Something um, like the Batman could be scary, though. Do you ever ever foresee Blade being scary in any way? Nah, it's gonna be more action. Okay, I think that's the way it's gonna go. I mean, because it's a, you know, mm-hmm. I think when you're trying to make a blockbuster horror, really doesn't get the blockbuster treatment. That's ultimately what it comes down to. You can't go that far because some people are like I just feel that was unnecessary, right? But I've always just had this. This desire for it's like, what if the bad guy was something like, you know, the people from the strangers, Mm -hmm. like some real sick stuff. So like that's that's an evil that has to be dealt with. Yeah. But yeah. okay. I mean, I guess you could go with like, well, isn't that basically what like Saul is or something? It's like, no, not really. No, it's like cops and bad guys. We want to have like the. Yeah, I guess you could say the conjuring is pretty close. With uh, the Conjuring, that's kind of the formula they take. They definitely created a shared universe yeah. of stuff of bad we stuff. Got another nun in the works. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm surprised because I was. I think I was alone. I, I thought the nun was okay. I thought the visuals were cool. the The setting was really done well. Um, but I don't. I don't think the nun got that much love, and it didn't. I th- I liked it though. I, I thought it was good too. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. But that's why it's like uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank because we're on the cuff. What is it, Lorraine and oh, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren. It's yes. like they kind of play them as like uh, you know hero characters <laughs> going to fight evil. That's true. Um, and then same thing in Insidious, sort of, kind of. Not really. I don't know. It's, just, it's something where I'd like to see like Constantine kind of go in that route. Sure. But 
well, you wish in one hand, shit in the other. <laughs> Either way, if you haven't seen the Batman as I'm speaking, totally worth checking out if you want the noir detective Batman style. Right. That's what I I mean. I came into it expecting that. I think if someone came in and watched, hoping to see something more like the Christopher Nolan Batmans, you're not going to get that. Yeah. Like, this is very much more, like, mystery, figuring things, putting, you know, it's the Riddler, so you're putting together pieces of the puzzle. Sure. No, pretty cool. And that's that's now, hey, that's now on the HBO Max. And I can't, and going back to what we probably talked about early on, uh, I almost forgot, Adam Wingard, who was a horror director, writer, like he did The Blair Witch, he did Your Next, he did uh, 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 VHS, all that stuff. <clears throat> He he was called in to do Godzilla vs Kong, so that was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I, I forgot. Like that's obviously not a horror film. That's more of an action spectacle okay. blockbuster. Yeah, John. But anyway, um, yeah. So I th- I think that there there is plenty of space. So moving forward, now that you have the Batman under your belt, I do. I don't have X under my belt, and it's driving me crazy. I want to watch yeah. that movie so bad. Do you think that'll come to Shutter? It'll oh, someone's gonna grab it if I it's hope not so. already. Well, well, it's the thing is with that, it's an A twenty four release. So like, I don't know. Remember, I was going through the pattern the one time of how you could get from Universal to Comcast because you know they're owned by them. Yeah. Like, but there's all the different offshoot labels, and they're owned by Universal, who is owned by Comcast. As far as I know, A twenty four isn't like an offshoot of anyone. I think they're their own the independent studio. Yeah. Huh. And if not independent, still like a, a, a wide release umbrella. So I'll have to look yeah. into that. If but if, it, if it's that, I mean, you know, Netflix or True. Prime, like they'll, they'll target stuff like that. Yeah, because I have seen like Hereditary and uh, yeah. Midsommar and all that stuff. So, yeah, no, X X is looking good. But I'm thinking, all right, so I had no idea Sam Raimi was directing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the new Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor yeah. Strange. I still probably won't see it, but that's exciting. Yeah, we got that, and then you know, we're Sam Raimi's getting his own. We're gonna go panel for Sam Raimi. I mean, who, yeah, yeah. Spe- I mean, it's probably gonna be mostly about the Evil Dead. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, so. well, the, the cool thing is he's not that he's never relinquished power of the Evil Dead, but he's kind of been a part of everything Evil Dead. Yeah. So it hasn't. Yeah, yeah. We have to talk about yeah, this more in depth exactly. with others. So and then, you know, see if we can track down the man himself yes that uh but yeah so you 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 did finish the batman i did okay i did i uh i thought it was good i thought the riddler the book him dano i thought he was scary um i liked the the slow burn yeah kind of the story unfolding him having to figure out the regular riddler's puzzles and and him kind of watching everything from afar uh Robert Pattinson I thought was great as Batman. Zoe Kravitz I thought was great as the Catwoman. Yeah. Um, the new Commissioner Gordon is good. He's good. Um, Penguin was good. Penguin was good. You know. A little bubblier than I thought he would be, but he's he's a little, you know. I like the way they played it. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, instead of doing like the... <laughs> right, right. You know, keeping him straight kind of like a gangster type mm-hmm. it really fits the theme of like the feel of the whole movie the batmobile looked really cool the batmobile did look really cool um, so i guess to close out moving forward do you think this can be done with any of the other uh superhero people like so now that they have this this noir dark slow you know like creepy batman out there now do you think anybody else can pull that off sadly no Okay, and it's I just once I I want it. You want it, but I haven't found it. And if anybody can suggest it, please <laughs> let me know. Okay, that's that's where I'm leaving that at. Like, ah, uh, well, I want it. Well, it's good to be back, man. It's good. To, I'll uh, I'll have to watch that again. It's great to be Batman. Back. Yeah, and we uh now that now that I am armed with Shutter. Yeah, be scared out there. I'm armed with shutter. <laughs> now that we have that, that's uh, that's something you and I have to delve into pretty deep. Uh, this shutter thing, I'm I'm really excited. I've only literally watched two films on it. They were both mm. shutter originals. I watched um, the 
Ooh, it was, it was, it was, it had Kim Bauer from, uh, what's it, Alicia Cuthbert? Ooh. It had, it had her, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember, but I watched two films so far. I'll, I'll, Sold. Yeah, I got it. Big fan of hers. Yes. So, um, yeah, man, I guess that's it. I guess it's it's good to be back. We'll, we'll see everybody on the uh, on Instagram again at Red River Horror. On Twitter, you can always interact with us at Red River Horror. That's all I got, Joe. Yeah, and yet, you know, I'm at Red River Joe. Um, and you know what? One of the fun things that I don't know if anybody wants to like get in on it because Dave Dave Groh's always dropping the uh, the hotels without the 13 mm. floors. So yes. if you want to, any curiosities if a place has a you know Bible in in the room <laughs> on the 13th floor you know follow check it out a bible in the drawer a 13th floor yeah. we're not doing too much googling we like having the speculation be like well i not you know what's the superstition yes we're just having a good time with it yeah and we'll bring dave in he'll talk we'll because the thing is when we bring dave in to talk about because he travels all over the country um and he's documenting his 13th floor uh, yeah. discoveries. Uh, we'll, we'll go into depth as to what the superstition is, what we've kind of come to know yeah. over the years. I remember, I think even we, we might even have a story from grade school about being told from the uh, from the teacher the story about the whole 13th floor thing. So that that's going to be a lot of fun yeah, to right. investigate further. Hell yeah, brother. All right. Well, anyway, you know, let me tell you this. You know, that's the end of the show. You know, welcome back to us mm-hmm. again. Things just keep happening, but, you know, we're here. We're not going. You know, anyway, it's been episode number 78 of the Red River Horror Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and remember to keep traveling those channels of fear.